Hey, it's Don. Today, I just wanted to address things you can do to help with your sales. We're going to hop straight on over there. We're not going to waste any time, and we're going to just show you some ins and outs on adjusting pricing, discount sales, and things like that right now. So here we are. This is my store. This is our account. My name's up there on the top. You can see our listings. We've got $800,000 in merchandise, 26,000, almost 27,000 individual items in the store. Now, this is usually the first page I would recommend you starting with. Go to your send offers section and you can send offers to eligible people. I've got 27 available. Now, I just started going and doing this on a daily basis in the last week or so. It's not something I usually have done in the past, but I wanna be ahead of the game, whether they're slowing down or not slowing down. I'd rather sell as many items now at this point instead of waiting on a little more cash for some of them, just to be safe. It's always better to be safe than be sorry. So if you go down here and see send offers, I've got 27 eligible. Now, if you watched other videos of mine, you've seen days when I've had 1,200 to 1,500 offers that I could send to watchers. And again, as I said, I am keeping up with them now. So every day or so, I've been sending out 60 or 70 on average. I sent out 64 last night. I saved this last little group here just to kind of show you. Now, I don't just randomly send them out. I always sort them by how long they have been on the site. So I will hit the start date button here, and it's going to categorize them by how long they have been on the site. And these are the ones that I'm going to go after first. Click on the send offer button. You can do them in groups if you'd like, but at this point, I've had this item up for several years. I've already made a phenomenal amount of money on it. I'll be happy with $20 on it. So in fact, let's just do it $19.99. I only have a few more of these left. This is one of the ones that's just nothing special, so I'm going to send that one out. Now, in some cases, I've sent a notice to everyone or added a cut and paste line. I don't do that anymore. It doesn't seem to make much difference in sales coming or going. I still allow the option for them to make an offer, though, when I do send sales up. I can just refuse it if I don't want it, and then end of story. So that's the gist on that. I just literally go down through these based on how long they've been on the site as to how much I would be willing to take on them. And if you look right here, you can see these have been up on the site for four years. I know other people will say that's crazy to keep something up for that long, but we sell items pretty much every week that have been up for any length of time all the way back to the beginning days of eBay. Somebody's watching this item and interested in it right now, and it's from 2016. So I don't really worry about how long the items are on. It's not that big of a factor for us with the amount of sales we have. So again, we can send another one. Here's another one of another item that's been up for a little while. Something I've had around. Let's go ahead and send a $14.99 offer. This is a dollar item, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, a dollar item. $14.99, I'm going to send an offer to. Now, if you send enough of these offers out, you're going to get some sales. Basically, before I sent these last couple items out, I had about $1,000 worth of merchandise I could get sales out of by sending these offers to watchers. It's all different types of material that I have. You can see some new jewelry that went up and all kinds of other things. I don't usually hit the ones that just went up very often at all. It might be a different time frame now with everything that's going on that you may want to go and start just hitting them all other than maybe the ones you just put up a week or 10 days ago. Those I usually let ride. This was just put up last night, so I'm no way going to make a uh, counter or any kind of offer to the buyer. Same with pretty much all of these items right here. So that's the first thing you want to do is check this out. Send these out as frequently as you can possibly do. If that means you go in there and check them three times a day, I would honestly recommend doing that right now. Not to panic or anything like that, but just send them out as you can. Keep in mind that the offers that you have on there change all the time. If that person who is watching one of your items and you were thinking about sending an offer to them gets a bunch of offers from other people, other sellers for other items they're watching, you may not have the ability to send that person an offer anymore. That's why I say three times at this point seems to be a good gist. So I do it in the morning, I do it in the afternoon, and then I do it in the evening. Hence the 64 we sent out last night. So keep on these. That's what I would honestly say. I've still been selling. I'll give you another hint too. I've been selling a lot of sheet music. Somebody else made that same comment in one of my posts and we sold a bunch this morning. I had several people buy sheet music, including one that bought several all at the same time. So it's going to be some free time. Maybe they want to do that with their free time too. Now, once you finish that, the other thing I would tell you is go to the marketing tab up here on your hub. Just click marketing 
and then you can go on down here. Now, I don't do the advertising at all. I don't do promoted listings any way, shape, or form. Now, we just put a small amount, 20% or so, of only our older merchandise on sale. I did get a sale out of it already. It just started a couple days ago, so I'm not too worried on that either. Again, I've started several different things that we're doing, so I'm looking at that. You can also adjust prices, as I've showed you in the past, too. But let's do a markdown and sale. There's several different versions that you can do on this. Let's go to sales event and markdown. Those are the only ones I usually do. I don't do any of the other order discounts or anything like that usually. Those are all good options. I'm not saying they're not good options. I just feel better and have good luck with the sale event and markdown personally. I can hit a whole bunch of items all at the same time. I'm going to keep their 30%. I mark up three times in most of the items that we'll be talking about. So I'll still have an increase over what I should normally get either way. So let's go ahead and select some items. When it comes up to this next screen here, this is going to give you two different options. Choose items from your inventory. We'll include skipped items as they qualify. Items can be removed at any time. So this would be if I want to just, let's say, select things specifically based on some criteria. Let's go in here and just look at these real quick. Now you can sort these down in here by many different factors. You can sort and categorize them by how long they've been on the platform. So that would be my best recommendation. Hit the ones that have been on the longest first. And you can see, as I said, I've already marked down anything that's been on for a certain length of time. 30%, I want to say, or somewhere in that range. So you can see I've already done that. This is one way to do it. You'll just hit and highlight the ones that are the oldest in your platform. You don't have to pick any different specific categories. You can pick categories, though. If I want to only mark down uh, store categories, now I can pick it by eBay category or I can pick it by my store category, whichever is easiest or you want to mess with. So let's say I'm going to pick clothing and shoes. So I'll click that and it's only going to show those items. And I already have marked those down, as I said. Not all of them necessarily because they've been on here the longest, but because a lot of these items I don't care to mess with much. I don't mess with clothing. Now, some of my jewelry would be under clothing too, belt buckles and things like that. I do put those under accessories. So that's what I got on this for that. I'll just go ahead and do it that way. All you do is click the ones that you want. It's going to add them down to your select option down here. And then you confirm selection. Now, I've already done it, so we're not going to go in there. Now, if you're doing big groups too, you can eliminate ones that are below a certain amount. So let's say you don't want to mark down anything that's below $9.99. You add $9.99 to whatever the amount is. Well, in fact, we can just do that up to, say, $999. So anything between that will be included. Anything above that or below the $9.99 won't be included in here. You can also filter it just to show days on site. So if you want to just mark down those from a specific date, you can go ahead and click uh, 1400 and then enter whatever time frame or date wise you want. You can exclude discount items by clicking this little button here. So that means if something was already discounted, it's not going to be included in here. So this weeds out all the issues that you can have by crossing different uh, markdowns at the same time. This will eliminate anything like that all at once with one button. And again, once you pick the ones you want, you've highlighted them, you've clicked the radio button, you just confirm selections. That's all there is to that. And it's going to post them as a markdown. Now, the other option is create rules using categories. This one works just as well. I use them both. Now, we've done some other discounts like group purchases and multi-purchases. I do that occasionally with free shipping. If you buy more than, say, three items or, or whatever the case I want to do, they may get free shipping with it. So that may be an incentive to multi-pack things together, just FYI. Now, again, I'm just going to pick out the 30% here. And this is selecting it by a category specifically. Uh, let's pick something um, that I haven't used yet. Let's pick um, let's pick pottery and glass here. Just one example. I don't have much pottery and glass in this store, so and none of it's marked down. So we're going to actually mark these all down. So uh, let's see, pottery and glass. You can select the amount price wise you want, and then you can add other filters as well. And with this other option, you can click new manufacturer refurbished. You can only do the seller refurbished. You can use used, whichever one of these you want to use as well to add to this. Now, I could keep adding more selections. So let's say I want to include sporting goods into this as well. I can add that. And now it's added the option and added sporting goods 
to this section here. So you can see what I'm talking about. None of these are marked down. Now we're going to adjust this just a little bit here because I've got a $4.99 item and I don't want to mess with that. So we're going to put, say, $6.99 and we're going to do all the way up to $999. So basically, that's going to remove anything that's below $6.99 and not put that on sale. You saw a tile up here that I had for $4.99. It's now gone from there. Everything else I'm fine with. These are items that I've had setting for a little while. So we're just going to go ahead and save and review this. From here, you can add a name or title or whatever you want. This is just for you. So I'm going to put sports and pottery and glass. And so at least I know. And then I'm going to add the 30%. You can do whatever you want for the title on here. Include skipped or new items when they qualify. That means that this will change. So if I add something to sporting goods, it may change what the sale items are. So I don't really want that. Now the other option you have here is keep items in the sale and block revision for price increases. That means they will stay on sale and they won't be raised if I raise group pricing on things. You can change the start dates and all of that sort of thing. I'm just going to let it ride. I don't care when it starts or when it stops. It's just the sale. And so we're going to have here 30% um, off ongoing sale. Oops. Let me fix that. Ongoing sale on various items. And that's it. Just something simple there. Now you can change your pictures, but you have to upload them. So you can't just pick one from one of your listings. Shows you what it's going to look like. And then all we're going to do is launch it. Now, usually this takes an hour or two from the time frame they have it in there for it to launch. It's all there is to it. You can do it at any level you want. You want to do half off on certain items, 5%, 10%, whatever you want to do. Now, let me just show you one other thing that does seem to get some movement here. Let's go back to listings one more time. From this section here, I'm just going to pick a category. Uh, let's pick something here. Let's pick holiday collectibles. We're going to pick that, and we're just going to pull up holiday collectibles. And I can alter the prices on these any day I want. Now, you can adjust how many show up on a page. So if you want to do just a limited amount or a certain amount, instead of the 500 it'll allow you to do, you can adjust it that way. You can set it to 50 at a time showing up. Just click the button here. It's going to just highlight those 50 that's on that page. Now, I'm going to edit 185 listings, all of them at once, which is the option. It will allow you to do 500 of these at a time. You'll have to let it process and pull them up into this listing panel before you can do anything, though. Now, from here, what you can do to get some movement, I'll select them all. I'm going to edit fields. Now, what I do is I go to the pricing, and I'll raise them or lower them all by a certain amount to get some traction. It refreshes everything on there. So let's say we want to mess with the buy it now price. We want to increase it all. We want to increase it all by, let's say, just a dollar. So I can go ahead and save it all and add a dollar to every single listing. So instead of $27.50 or $18.50, you're going to see $28.50 and $19.50 on those same listings. This categorizes and changes every one of those items just a hair. So you can see the difference right now. It's altered every single one. So if I go in and submit this, it's going to process them all, and they're all going to get movement like something major was changed on them. As I said before, key things that are tied to the listing are price, title, and photo. If you change one of those, it's going to readdress your listings because either if you change the price, it's now in a different section. If you change the photo, it's elevated something in the listing, and there's action activity on that listing. So I do do this fairly often. I can go back in and change them if I want. I can go back in and lower it again in another month. If you combine all of these activities, you should see some sort of increase, at least get some sales in from doing this if you've got some good items. If your items are bad, your photos are bad, your titles are bad, you're overpriced or something, you may not see much traction no matter what you do until you fix those issues. But that's what I have for you today. I really honestly and sincerely hope that some of this will help you increase or bring some sales in if you are having issues. Well, there you are. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts on this. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button down below. You can also hit that bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.
Smedley the elephant will now broad jump 100 feet over 10 automobiles. Smedley can't jump 100 feet, Captain Crunch. To get my peanut butter cereal, Smedley can do anything. It's the yummy sweet cereal with the honest of peanut butter flavor. Now watch, 100 feet. Uh, make that 101 feet. Captain Crunch's peanut butter cereal. A tasty part of a nutritious breakfast. Mm.